Welcome everybody. This is, uh, my name is Steve Patrick. Uh, welcome to our studio. This is uh, my wife and I's uh, studio in Arlington Heights. And I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, an hour of painting. I set up a nice life, flax and a glass, kind of an ode to Edward Menet. And um, just the last few weeks of his life, he was a Ill in bed, sick at home, and uh, friends brought him flowers. And kind of an ode to that, I'm gonna be painting these lilacs in a glass. Um, we've got about nearly 100 participants tonight. So uh, like I said, this is live, and uh, there's gonna be mistakes being made, and <laughs> welcome to the journey of art. Uh, I'd like to just introduce, um, a few processes I'll be doing. I love painting in oil as well as watercolor. And um, tonight I'm gonna to be doing oil painting. And I'm doing mostly transparent oil. That's oil with uh, very little white in it. Um, so I'll get started soon, but um, I just wanna give you a little bit of background on uh, my approach to painting any scene. Um, we mentioned this as being a plein air scene. We're not doing it so much plein air, we're doing it in our studio. And, but the setup I do have here is, let me lower this camera here, is my plein air setup. Uh, it's a very portable system. Um, I can carry it all on my back and it's, it's ready to go. Um, Panels come, it's a 12 by 16 panel I'll be painting tonight. And um, so let's get going. Um, we've got Connor here kind of manning the helm. If there's any questions that you may have, there's a Q&A on the chat feature. Uh, feel free to ask questions and Connor will shoot them over to me and uh, we can have a discussion while I'm, pa while I'm painting. So thanks again for joining me. Um, I'll be using a, uh, a little Galkid medium. This is a fast drying medium that I'll use with the paint and I'll establish uh, more or less an underpainting process that will really give me the lights and darks really fast. Uh, I like to do this in about 10 minutes uh, to get this underpainting process down and then I'll uh, mix colors and then go to the next level of painting. So I've got a little uh, turpentine here in the can and my with my Galkid I'll be um, um, using some transparent paint. Let me just go over the paint I do have down here. Um, I've got my white paint here, my lighter colors of blue, ochres, and yellows, and then the oranges, uh, the transparent orange right here, uh, quinacridone violet, dioxidine purple, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, uh, viridian, sap green, transparent yellow earth, a few grays, and a transparent red earth. And over here I have a Prussian blue. I may use that as well in the background. Since the background is so dark, uh, I may need to get some really dark paint. I don't typically use black. Uh, I like to mix my black with a combination of the dark, dark colors I do have. So let's get painting. I love this, this scene here, uh, mainly for the, uh, the contrast between the lights and darks, the whites and the, and the, and the blacks, but there's also contrast in, in warmth and coolness. Uh, the warms in the base of the glass and then the warmth going up into the flowers, as well as the cool light that's, uh, that's coming on this side as is the warmer light over here. Uh, it's highlighting the flowers. 
So let's get painting. I do like to listen to music while I'm painting, so. A little Vivaldi never hurts anybody. So that's my cool background there. I'm gonna get, the, get this warmth coming in here, in the main flowers. Coming up. I like painting in, in complementary colors. You got you got your yellows and purples, your greens and reds, as well as your your blues and oranges. Um, so we got got some nice purple coming in here. Part of the plein air painting process is is really being uh, painting of your emotions, your your um, feeling for what this landscape is painting is is uh, giving to you. And uh, in this process, painting quick, you're uh, you're being uh, affected, affected by the landscape and this this whole process gives you a really good good way of getting the concept and the and the, and the big shapes down right away you're not really worried about detail the whole process is getting getting it big shapes down and uh, and then moving on this glass is is really fun to paint It's, um, you got to paint almost like it's not there. And then um, at the last minute, add, add your shine and reflections. Nice dark shapes right back in here. Got some leaves coming down in here. There's leaves over on this side. So this main goal is in this underpainting process is to is to get that middle value, that middle range of, of value and color, and um, not worried about all the details as yet. It's just working on the warmth to cool transitions, the warmth to cool. Um, once you get that established, your painting is is nearly done. Um, I'm going to come in with some little details of flowers. 
I just want to capture a few of these. Sure, I get this dark back in here. Steve, we do have our first question of the night. Yeah. It is what is the technique called when you are using the cloth? It's just wiping it away. It's just kind of wiping it, lightening it up. Um, some nice, nice, good shadows down in here. I'm looking at value, I'm also looking at temperature. I wanna make sure my warms are, are operating down in here. And then my, uh, my cooler, cooler colors, cool colors are all up in there. Uh, once you have established this, um, this underpainting, uh, painting pretty much paints itself. It's um, my goal is to get it up about ninety percent done within the this first hour, um, and then there's always a little fine touches as we go. Um, Afterwards, I'll lay those in. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Barrington White House, though. If, if you've never been to the Barrington White House, um, when all this is over <laughs> and we open back up, um, the White House is, is an amazing structure. And, and the history of that house is uh, really something to. Uh, to marvel at. Uh, it's got a ton of history. Uh, I've had a number of shows there and uh, it's just a really fun, fun place to uh, watch a show, have a, have a dinner, um, watch art, music, uh, plays, drama. It's, it's got a whole host of uh, interesting things happening there. And so, uh, and I'm, I'm honored to be the first um, person to uh, host this, uh, this first night out, oh, Thursday nights. Um, it's kind of a fun little, little thing they're doing. I want to capture the, the flow of these flowers uh, also are, is, is kind of important. This, the gestural motion of the of this this one bloom right in here in this flower is uh, is just amazing. That that's the thing that caught my eye is that real gentle S curve in this flower. Um, there was another question, Steve, about the cloth you're using. Is there a solvent on it, like turpentine or anything like that? No, no, it's just a dry. It's actually. Cup towels from Costco is uh, is what I'm using. It's uh, you know it, it'll get dirty with um, with paint, but other than that, um, 
they're a great towel to, to use. That and, and Viva is, is a good paper towel. Here I'm just, just poking in a, a few little flower petals. Uh, I want to make sure I get these in. These are going to be down in the glass. I'm using this more or less as a drawing tool. On the subject of the petals, uh, a question here said it looks like you're scraping away paint to create the petals. Is that the technique yes. you're using? Yes. It's a little, um, it's a, a, a little rubber spatula is what it is. And it's, a, it's just a fun little tool to use. Um, So that's, that's the underpainting process. Now I'm gonna wipe off the paint, uh, the liquid paint that I used down in here to, to put that on there. And, um, cause you don't want this setting up on your palette cause it, it sets up in about 20 minutes and it's, it gets really dry and tacky. Uh, but that's the beauty of, of what's happening up here now is, um, this will set up in about 10, 20 minutes. So it'll allow me to put paint up as I go. Um, I have pre-mixed paint down in here. Let me show you again. And earlier, I, I didn't want you to waste time watching me mix paint, but um, I have some grays in down in here. Some warm grays and cool grays. Uh, I've got a warm green light, cool green dark. I got a deep black. Then I have some blues for the, uh, the fabric. And then I have some white for the petals. Uh, it's not pure white, it's just kind of an off white that I like using. Um, Make sure my drawing is, is, is accurate. Looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and paint these leaves in. Steve, could you tell us a little bit more about what you mean when you say warm colors versus cool colors? Sure, the, um, the warm colors have uh, yellow or red as a, as, a, as a color. Those typically are, represent warmth within the painting. The cool colors uh, lean toward the purples and the blues and, um, and the greens. The greens can either go, be warm or cool depending on which way they lead. But um, I have a cool, if it's a cool green, it's leaning toward the blue. If it's a warm green, it's leaning toward the yellow. So um, I've got warm greens and cool greens up there as uh, both. So um, let me add some of those leaves in there now. Can you tell us too a little bit about the uh, medium you're using or the, the the board and was there a drawing on it? Did you pre-draw your? Yes, I, I did a, a few little marks on the on the board, uh, some pencil, just to get you know the, the proportions correct and uh, give me a head start on where I'm going to place the the colors. Um, the board itself is. Um, just a piece of uh, Luan, like one eighth inch Luan, and then I glued canvas to the uh, to the board itself. 
And then the the, the um, palette I'm using is a uh, James Coulter palette. It's a it's a really nice box. It's very portable. Just comes right off and folds up. You can take it. Let me add some of these cooler, cooler grays that I see. Uh, I'm looking mainly for shapes. These are the petals that are in the shadow. Um, some of them are cool, some of them are warmer. And if you really want to know how to paint white petals, uh, really know your grays. Your cooler, cool grays and warm grays. Again, the grays that are leaning toward the yellow are the warm grays. The cool grays are leaning more toward the, the blue side. Um, if you could see in right over here, this whole bloom in here is, is all in shadow. That's more of a, of a cool blue, cool gray, um, operating maybe a little bit darker than that. And as it's coming around, it's getting brighter and brighter. So I'll warm those grays up as it's coming into the light. And as, as these petals come into the light, that's when you hit it, hit it with the light. And um, I like this, I love this, this motion of, of the, the blooms just growing up and out of this glass. It's just a, a really neat shape. And I wanna make sure I capture that. As this is coming up into the, into the light, I'm warming up the shadows of those, those white areas. We have a couple of questions about uh, your subject matters. Um, okay. We can, see, we can see quite a few paintings of flowers there, but other than um, maybe flowers and floral scenes in Barrington's White House, I know you have done a couple of Barrington's White House. Do you have a favorite subject? And can you talk about uh, maybe the difference between being close up to a subject like you are now and being, you know, a little bit further away? Yeah. Um, that's a great, great question. Um, when you're painting uh, distant landscapes, it's it's going to be um, you're going to be painting a lot more atmosphere into your scenes. So the um, so so you're going to have a lot more bluer, a lot more grayer colors that are representing that distant horizon of those distant shapes as you as objects and forms come closer and closer to you they're going to warm up they're going to get higher contrast they're going to get brighter and darker and um, that's one way that we achieve that depth of um, that depth of, of perception within your painting itself um, but you do have some depth perception over here. So as this flower is turning away from us, these edges are going to get softer and softer. I don't want hard edges back in here um, representing that flower petal as it's turning away from the light. It's, it's going to have a soft edge to the, 
to the um, to the very end. And as it's only coming around, it's going to start getting harder and harder edges and warmer and warmer uh, colors. That's um, that's so important to capture your 3D forms. Um, a lot of artists, a lot of students go in and try to replicate what they're seeing because they see all this detail and they start putting petals on right away and without really understanding that third dimension, that form that's, that's uh, occupying, that object is occupying in 3D space. So here I'm just adding those gray shapes as we go, warm grays. And that little leaf shape right in the middle there. Nice cool leaf down in here on this side. So we have seen now a couple of different uh, implements or tools that you're using between the, the large brush that you used at the beginning and the, the scraper, the rubber spatula. Can you tell yes. us a little bit more about uh, different types of brushes? Yeah, this is a, uh, a flat I'm using. It's, um, it's a long, they call it a long flat. Um, the first brushes I was using were just the dollar fifty brushes you get from Ace Hardware. Um, these are so good to just block in and just splat, splatter the, the paint wherever you go. Um, the rubber spatulas are actually called color shapers. I get these at Blick, so these are these are a good tool. And then um, and then the rosemary brushes are um, the more finer tuned brushes that you use. Uh, typically you get, you go uh, big to small as far as your brush sizes are concerned. Um, let me get this gray in here on this, on this pot. Right now, this is a number seven rosemary flat, long flat. Oh man, I better get painting. <laughs> Half hour into it. So let me add some lights to these flowers as I go. Um, I love this big cluster of, of, of white right up in here. 
those big cluster of flowers. Steve, we do have uh, quite a few um, questions about the paints you're using. Some are asking brands. Some are okay. asking if you're doing any kind of mixing with uh, diluting them with turpentine or using drying agents or anything like that. The only drying agent I used was at the very beginning. Of, uh, it's called Galkid, uh, fast drying medium. It helps set up this. This is underpainting. Um, the paint I'm putting on now is, um, it has a little bit of walnut oil in it, just to give myself a, uh, an extended painting time. Uh, so this paint will stay wet for a couple of days, actually. Um, We've got other painting projects, my wife and I, um, tomorrow and uh, Saturday. So we want, you know, this paint. And then I'll finish up this painting um, offline. But um, but you notice every time I, I put a brush stroke down, I'm wiping the brush. Um, I'm wiping just as much, if not more, the brush than I am painting. Uh, that's one way of getting um, clean, clean color uh, on your paint. There's this light, light band right in here. Let's get that leaf in the foreground in here. Another leaf falling down there.
So I hope everybody is well and uh, enjoying their times at, at home. Um, my wife and I are both well and we're um, fortunate. Uh, I'm taking every precaution as possible and uh, we'll get through this. Um, when we do though, uh, just like to say, if, if you are interested in learning how to paint, and if you're in within the local area, um, I do have oil painting classes in Palatine. Uh, we'll resume those uh, probably in around June or July, but um, as things open up, we'll make uh, we'll make plans to open as well. And um, I'd love to have you join us in a studio in Palatine, uh, Friday mornings, where we paint for three hours. I also teach watercolor classes at the Palette and Chisel on Wednesday nights. Uh, those have also been postponed, but we'll get to, to doing that again. Um, and. Uh, in the meantime, I am offering classes, online classes, one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, mentoring sessions. Those are, are very fun. I have two students right now, and uh, I have room for a few more. Uh, but it's it's a it's a fun fun process of of painting. Um, very relaxing, very uh, stress relieving, I'll say. Um, just looking at shapes, finding those shapes and painting them. Um, this hour is just flying by. Let me add a, a shadow to this side. Um, and then it'll pop that whole left side here. Two questions here about uh, time. Yep. Uh, from start to finish, how long does it take to paint a still life? And then this feels like almost a trick question is, how do you know when a painting is finished? Uh, <laughs> I like painting, um, I'd say no more than two hours uh, from start to finish. Uh, the first phase of this, this first hour goes by really fast. 
it's um, I'm going to connect these two up. Um, this was too strong of a shape down in here. The uh, when do you know when it's finished? Uh, man, I think the painting actually starts communicating to the artist in uh, telling the artist, hey, I'm done. <laughs> I can't go anymore. Um, maybe it's the artist just saying back, you know, I've had enough. Uh, a good thing to, to do though, is if you are tired is to put your brush down and uh, give it a day or two rest. Uh, look at it every now and then and it'll start talking to you again on, on what it needs and how to proceed um, with whatever it needs. Um, just gonna add a few of these petals up in here. little holes I'm seeing in here opening up some of this With that, I'll, uh, I'll call it a night. Um, I do have another painting very similar to it, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll touch this up, give, it, give myself another hour to finish it. But um, I do want to show you this is uh, what it will ultimately look like um, as the finished painting, framed, ready to go. So. Yeah, come real close up to the screen with uh, that one and then the one you just painted, if you can. Yeah. So this one's a different setting, but um, painted about a year ago. And it was, uh, it was a fun one to do.
it just needs a little fine tuning. But uh, other than that, it's uh, it's just about done. Any other final questions? You did get quite a few compliments in here. Beautiful, uh, beautiful room with so many windows and natural light. Thank you, fun watching you uh, work. Um, there was a question here that I did miss earlier about uh, when to choose oil and when to choose watercolor. Oh, boy. I haven't, asked, I haven't answered that question for myself. That's a great question. Um, when I travel, when we travel, my wife and I often travel to various venues. Uh, I'll bring both mediums. It's, um, it's wonderful to switch back and forth. If I don't have a lot of time, I'll do a quick sketch in pencil. Um, and, um, you know, I did a quick sketch of, of the uh, floral as well. A little thumbnail up in here, just to give myself um, a little idea. Um, but I'll have little, little um, watercolor sketchbook in here, where you know, on our travels, you know, uh, I'll, I'll break out the watercolors. And it's it's a, just a fun, fun sketchbook to have. Um, always have it with you. Um, or when you're doing larger paintings, um, I'll use the same easel for my watercolors. So it's, it's a, it's, but knowing when to do watercolor and when to do oil, um, I often do both, uh, the same scene. And I may do an oil, a watercolor of this as well. So. Well, thank you so much, Steve. We really appreciated having you on, on here, especially yeah. as our first uh, host. Good and guy. I will say, um, everybody who did attend today will get an email with some information about your website, where they can find more about your classes, yeah. uh, your different appearances, and then uh, they also have the ability to purchase some of your uh, fine work there. Yeah. Um, and that will be coming a, in an email. I do have a current sale online right now. Uh, there's about seven pieces, seven florals that are about two hundred dollars. Normally, they go for about four fifty, five hundred. So, uh, very good deal. So, well, again, thank you so much, and uh, we'll let you get back to it. But thanks again for giving us this hour of uh, calm and peace and serenity. We, I think, oh, we all good. need that in our lives. Good. I was. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having us.